Once we go through those cones, jump on them. Let the ABS do the work. Ready for it. And... Oh, I think the Holden's got it. No, mate, I definitely won. I'm miles in front. <laughs> That'd be right. Put a spin on anything you do. As the day wore on and the tyres warmed up, Charlie and I agreed that, for the money, there's not a car in the world that comes close to the performance these things are capable of. I reckon the cultural cringe that some Australians still feel towards Holdens and Fords should really be a thing of the past. Before reaching a conclusion, we both jumped in the Falcon to compare notes. point is this, I prefer the handling of this, in spite of the fact that it actually has less mechanical grip, because I think it's more neutral, and at the end of the day, you buy a car like this to enjoy, don't yeah, you? Yeah, absolutely. So I get that. But the issue is, I don't prefer turbocharged power. I like instant power when I've got it, right? Let's stop on the gas and let's go somewhere. As we proved when we did the drags, off the line. The yeah. Holden literally blew this to the weeds. Now, by the time we got to an interesting speed, we were going faster than you're allowed on any road in yeah, Australia. Absolutely. So largely irrelevant. Right? Which is why you persist in going sideways everywhere, because at least you're <laughs> under the speed limit. Yeah, true. <laughs> Online. <laughs> Apex, it's sort of like a pointy thing. They're often in the middle of corners. Since Steve had warmed up the tyres for me, I took the wheel for the last lap of the day. Yeah. All right, let's go. Come on, Charlie, okay. big drift. So drive badly. Look. Drive very, very Ready? badly. Go. Bad drive. Go. Bit of dirt. I knew that. <laughs> Great hands and feet everywhere. It's <laughs> <laughs> still going. We're still going. We can't control it. It's gone, man. It's all over. Oh, no. oh, oh, yeah. How was Get that? Get me out of this car. <laughs> So, what's it to be? Holden or Ford? Red or blue? And the winner is... Neither. But they're both very good at warming up the tyres. No, mate, I've got this rumble. That engine in this car. Piece of cake. No, I reckon the front end of that car in this car's a better match. That's got a horrible gearbox. That grips better. This has got poor mechanical grip, but it's very neutral. Yeah, if you put the back tyres of that on this, that'd be actually better again. Unless it gripped too much and it wasn't neutral. It's yeah, but that's quite a pointy bad. car. I really like the V8, instant grunt. I'm with you on that, sounds better too. By the time the turbo gets busy, you're exceeding the speed limit, and you'd never do that. <laughs> Actually, as Steve was saying before that piece, you, you're both right, and, and you're both won, you know? Ford and Holden won in that. These are fantastic and they're world-class cars for the money. That's what I love about them. But what I even love more about them is the fact that they drift so well. Yeah, mate, I learnt to drive apex to apex. Come on, <laughs> drifting is fantastic. There's a national championship for it now. You even get a trophy for it. You get a trophy, it probably drifts right off the mantelpiece. You, you That's waste. gonna go on forever. That's but in the meantime, drifting. here's the news. India used to be known as the jewel of the British Empire, but nowadays Britain, or Jaguar and Land Rover, are the jewel of the Indian Empire. Actually, Tata. If you've never heard of Tata before, it's a giant Indian industrial conglomerate, and they own airlines and hotel chains and have a massive automotive industry that make delightful vehicles like this. Oh, oh beautiful. <laughs> now, this year, Tata bought Jaguar and Land Rover, much to the horror of English purists. But I can see an upside to this, you know, I had a few ideas. Imagine the off-road capability of an Indian Land Rover. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the trunk? <laughs> or of a Jaguar that is fully sick, mate! <laughs> Thank you. Now, on news closer to home, 
Ford Australia are actually thinking of converting the Falcon into a front-wheel drive. Are they Falcon crazy? I know. <laughs> Who likes the idea of a front-wheel drive Falcon? <laughs> Shocking. Absolutely. I mean, well, that's the problem. You know, no one's been buying this car. Actually, last year, they sold less of these things than they did when they first came out in 1960. But that was an excellent model, mate. In fact, 1960 was a great year for a lot of things. <laughs> yeah, exactly right. Well, I mean, no one's buying these things, so, the, you know, the Seppos have decided, hey, we're selling 300,000 Tauruses a year. Guess what you're going to get? And they were a thing of beauty last time they tried it. Exactly right, yeah. Well, speaking of strange things, Ford, there's a new James Bond movie about to be released called, wait for it, The Quantum of Solace. What the hell <laughs> does that mean? I understood Goldfinger and I understood Thunderball, but whatever Quantum of Solace means, I have no idea. James Bond will have an Aston Martin, which is a good thing. Yay! But when he's sort of co-spy, she drives a Ford car. That's a bit sexist, that, isn't no, it? No, she no, only no. gets that. She gets that. Jimmy gets the Aston and she gets that. Now, the funny thing is that the CEO of Ford Europe says that this car matches the, the character who drives it because uh, she is adventurous, individual and thoroughly modern. And by the looks of it, awfully boring. <laughs> Actually, speaking of little cars, um, Mini are now thinking about making an SUV, a four-wheel drive well, Mini. Why not? I mean, it's a, a Mini's as big as a Land Cruiser anyway. That's exactly <laughs> right. It's a very Mini, is it? All you've got to do these days to make a car, you know, into an SUV, is put some, you know, crappy grey plastic on a car, jack it up a little bit. This thing looks like it'll barely clear grass. But the one lovely thing about that car is it looks like it's been styled off about a 1954 Vanguard. And it's had a facelift. Its eyes are pulled back like that. <laughs> Can't smile. Now, Warren was talking before about the Brits losing their luxury cars to India, but the Brits are also losing their sports cars to the armcos, to the trees, <laughs> to the scenery in general. They are smashing the very, very fabulous Veyrons. Oh, look at that. Oh, man, look at that. Two Brits have smashed two of these 400 kilometre an hour supercars in the last 18 months. The headlines in the tabloids are calling them crash test pommies, which I, think, <laughs> which I think is highly, highly reasonable. That thing there is worth the thick end of $2 million. Well, it was. That's more than our next ad break. And since this is Top Gear Australia, we wanted to do something uniquely Australian. Now, our first idea involved a Hills Hoist, a Victor Murray and an Esky. And then we got a phone call. Kalgoorlie, 10,000 kilometres from anywhere that matters. A pioneer town built on the dust of a gold rush. It's an isolated, thriving metropolis, home to 25,000 hardy desert dwellers. Cal Gooley. Some say it's the biggest hole in Australia. But they're wrong. The biggest hole's right next door. This is the super 